This is what I came up with. First, we need to introduce new variables. Like the thickness of the absorbing material, d, and what m is equal to, and sigma max. Second, we need to introduce new arrays. And we need these arrays to hold the sigma and the sigma star values and how they change spatially in the absorbing material. And three, since the coefficients depend on the conductivity and those sp change spatially, the coefficients CA, CB, DA, DA, and DB need to be turned into arrays also. And four, we need to test how well the absorbing layer works. It's a bad idea to implement it and just assume it's working if we don't visually notice a reflection from the left edge of the grid. It's better to actually numerically show how the absorbing layer is working and how little the reflection is. Let's now go into more detail about the four changes or additions that we need to make to the code. First, there are some new variables that we need to add to the grid. For example, it helps to create a variable to store the thickness of the absorbing layer, so that if we ever need to change the thickness, we can easily change it by changing just one number in the code. We might call this thickness of the absorbing layer d, as in the equation, but that's not very descriptive, so I'm going to call it PML, which is, of course stands for perfectly mashed layer. I mentioned earlier that the thickness of the PML is often 10 grid cells, so let's go ahead and set PML is equal to 10. And the units here is in grid cells. We also need to store the order of the PML, which we could call just M or MPML. We're going to set this equal to 3. And we also need to know the value of sigma max, which I'm going to write like this. That is equal to 0.8 M plus 1 over eta naught. So I'm going to write that as eta and delta x, which is delta in our case, and divided by, this, or times this in the denominator, multiplied by square root of mu r epsilon r. Remember, mu r and epsilon r are just equal to 1 in our case, since we have free space adjacent to the absorbing layer. And for lossless materials, eta uh, naught is equal to square root of mu naught over epsilon naught. And I think that's about it for the new variables that we need. For the second part, creating new arrays, we need to introduce new arrays to hold the sigma and sigma star values and how they change spatially in the grid. Let's first consider sigma. We want sigma to vary according to this polynomial grading. D in our case, we've called PML is the thickness of the PML. Then since the denominator is in units of grid cells, grid cells, then to be consistent we need the numerator to also be in units of grid cells. So in place of x, we should use spatial grid indices like i. If we do that, do we have sigma i is equal to I over PML, those are both in terms of grid cells, to the power M times sigma max. So will this work? Well, let's think about the orientation of this sigma array versus our grid. Right now, as I increases, how does sigma change? Right now, as i increases, so as we move to the right in the grid, sigma will also increase. So we have something like this, and this is sigma max. So this is a plot of sigma. So the conductivity in our grid is increasing until we get to the edge of the absorbing layer, and it's the highest. 
Is this what we want? No, we need to have actually the reverse of this. We need the conductivity to increase slowly from the air region over here to sigma max at the left edge. And now we don't have an abrupt change in sigma at the air absorbing boundary inter interface. So how can we change this in our expression? First, it helps to figure out over which eyes we want to have the PML. We still need to have a PEC here on the edge because we can't update the EZ1 component using regular updates. So this means in order for the absorbing layer to be PML cells thick, the EZs from I equal 2 to PML plus 1 Let's say that's over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. All right, so this would be ten. That's PML. But in order to have ten components, we're going to have the PML go from two for the E components to PML plus one. So this region should constitute the absorbing material. It's often a good idea to draw a diagram of the grid components and label the indices so we can clearly see which field components should be assigned to the PML. Now we want the smallest sigma value to be at PML plus 1. So, so we should change the numerator so that when i is equal to PML plus 1, the numerator has the smallest value. So now I'm going to write sigma i. I have PML plus 1 minus i all over the thickness. Of course, the way I've written it here, we're actually going to get a conductivity of 0 at PML plus 1. A conductivity of 0 is not very useful since that's equivalent to air. Instead, if we change it so that a conductivity of 0 occurs a half of a cell to the right, at the location of the HY component, then this EZ component at PML plus 1 will be one half of a cell into the absorbing material. To accomplish this, we need to have 1.5 in the numerator instead of 1. So if I do that, now we have 1.5 in the numerator. So now when i is equal to PML plus 1, the numerator will be equal to 0.5. So we'll have 0.5 over PML to the power m sigma max at i equal PML plus 1. Now let's re-examine the denominator of this equation. We previously defined the thickness of the absorbing material to be PML cells thick. But if we critically consider how thick the PML is now, that we put the EZ component at I equal PML plus 1, and one half of a cell into the PML, now the PML is closer to PML plus 5 cells thick. So on the next slide, I'm going to show that this is actually shaded in because we wanted this component to be half of a cell into the PML. So now our equation, the final form of our equation, is going to be PML plus 1.5 minus I in the numerator over PML plus 0.5 in the denominator to the power m times sigma max. These values should only be used when defining the CA and CB coefficients for the EZ component for I equal 2 to PML plus 1. Now, what about sigma star? See if you can develop a loop to define the sigma star array to be used in the DA and the DB coefficients in the PML. Also define which HY indices the we need to define sigma star in the PML.